information from the radiation monitoring teams will be combined and analyzed by experts manning the central radiation control point. These experts, who know just how fast harmful radiation reduces in force, can predict when it will be safe for people to come out of shelters and resume normal tasks. We have warned that you may have to act before you get any detailed reports. Just what can you do if fallout comes your way? Find the best shelter you can. The more solid substance you can put between yourself and the fallout, the better. But an ordinary frame house with windows closed will give considerable protection. In a house, it's best to get on the floor, away from doors and windows. Or if you can, find a location with additional walls in the center of the building. A basement is even better if the house has one. Large buildings, such as apartment or office buildings, give good protection. The thick, heavy masonry of their walls and floors makes it hard for radiation to get through. Basements, inside rooms, or corridors on the lower floors are safe. The basement of any house or building will become a good improvised shelter if you block the windows with sandbags and place other sandbags on the floor above the shelter area. If you don't have sandbags, thick, solid layers of books, magazines, or newspapers, or even a series of file cabinets standing close to each other can cut the radiation danger. In some parts of the country, there are storm cellars or outside vegetable storage cellars. They may be used as shelters from fallout. If you plan to use such a cellar, or your basement, or any other shelter, stock it and supply. To equip and supply your shelter area, you need some of the same things you might take on a vacation camping. First, sleeping equipment at your shelter area. Folding cots, or sleeping bags, and blankets. Then, food and water. There should be at least a two-week supply. You want plenty of fruit juices and lots of your family's favorite candy. The drinking water supply should be rotated often. Be sure it's fresh. And don't forget such basic needs as sugar, salt, pepper, and other seasoning that your family ordinarily uses. Now, some equipment. A radio is very important. It should be a battery portable with spare batteries. A transistorized radio is best, as the batteries last longer. Next, you need light in the form of flashlights and a battery-operated lantern. Then, a good first aid kit. Now, plates, cups, silverware. A can opener and a bottle opener are important. Add to these things enough closed containers to take care of garbage and human waste. Especially if there will be children in the shelter, include some books and magazines, paper and pencils, maybe one or two small and simple games. The best protection of all is the special shelter built according to specifications of your local civil defense organization. This has an air filter to allow ventilation, but keep dust out, and it has at least three feet of earth over it. It would be a good idea to go right now to your local civil defense office to secure a plan for the type of shelter you want, then to get busy on construction. Plans are simple, using standard materials, so maybe you can do the job yourself. But all this special shelter talk won't help very much if you're caught way out on the open road. If that happens, keep driving until you see a building, which may be a house or barn, church or school. Drive as close to the building.
building as you can. Then, get yourself and your family out the car and take cover in the building. If you live on a farm and have sufficient warning, get your animals under cover and give them enough food and water to last several days. where outside dust does not penetrate will be safe storage points for water. Whatever kind of shelter you find, settle down and make the best of it. If there are others with you, help them by being as calm as you can. And don't be discouraged. You can go out for very brief periods if you are well covered and keep the dust off your skin. Wear heavy boots or shoes and pants tucked in or tied around the bottom to keep dust out. If any dust gets on you, brush it off promptly. And when you have a chance, wash it off. That dust can burn your skin. But what happens if you do get exposed to a great deal of fallout? Food or water has been contaminated by the dust. Internal damage may occur. When dust has been left on skin, there will be skin burns. When you have been near dust too long, there may be radiation sickness. Exposure can even cause death. If you have had considerable exposure, you will vomit and grow weak. But after a few hours, this sensation will pass. And by the next day, you may have had the last of it. Even if you have been exposed to excessive fallout, you may eat and drink just as you normally would, but don't force yourself. Whether you have had these symptoms or not, if civil defense radio announcements have said that radiation has been high in your section, keep an eye on your condition for the next few days. Watch especially for these developments in the two weeks following exposure. Return of nausea. Sore throat. Bruise spots developing without any known reason. Loss of hair. These conditions, or nosebleed, or diarrhea, should be reported to a doctor or to the nearest first aid station set up under civil defense plans. Unless civil defense teams have warned that your area is still dangerously radioactive, you can get out and work to help yourself and help others. Although fallout can be deadly, your chances of avoiding damage from it are much better if you follow the directions we have given you. During an alert, keep your portable radio tuned to the Conrad radio frequencies, 640 and 1240 on the AM dial for the latest reports and advice. Right now, today, before there is an alert, Take time to learn the civil defense by...